G'day everyone, Prep Aussie here. I hope you're all well in whatever part of the world you're watching this video. Today is Tuesday, the 2nd of June 2020, and the time here is 08.45 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Well, folks, uh, as usual, plenty, plenty to go on with. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, here is my sponsor. Totally Rawesome. Totally Rawesome make golden activated turmeric paste and many other turmeric based treats. Um, folks, if you haven't tried this stuff, you really need to. Um, if you've got joint pain, inflammation of your joints, etc., and if you just want to start feeling better, take this stuff. Honestly, it, it does work. Everybody gets back to me and says that I'm not, you know, I'm not lying really. It does work. Um, they even have stuff for your dogs. I give it to my dog, Woody, because he needs it for his hip. So if you have some dogs with uh, hip joint problems, give it to them. Get some. Um, here's their contact details. Uh, if you're calling from overseas, drop the zero and add 061-433-165-848 and info at totallyrawesome.com.au. Uh, and I'm not too sure about the bundle farmers market. I'll have to find out from the guys. And just a plug for our good friend David Morgan at the Morgan Report, um, who will be on this week. Uh, I've got a, a booked in an interview with David for Thursday morning, so I'll probably post it on Friday. Okay. Um, if you want to know, this guy is a financial guru and he is called the silver guru because that's what he does. If you haven't subscribed to his site, you should do, especially if you want to invest in stuff. He's very good. Okay. Right. What do you think is going on at the moment with the whole world scenario? Um, it's pretty chaotic, isn't it, at best? Uh, but is there any surprise on anybody's part that, you know, you're shocked, surprised, anything at the moment? Because uh, I'm not. You know, this was meant to happen. And it is happening. And if you think it wasn't going to happen, then there's something wrong with it. Now, here's, I guess this is where Trump is interesting compared to other people because he's not a politician. So he doesn't have to kowtow to uh, political influences. And uh, I just listened to the phone call that Trump made to the governors of these states, and he just said, you got to stomp down on them, basically, which is, you know, I've got to be honest, he's correct. You need to actually kick the shit out of these guys to make them realise. And I was saying to my son this morning that my, my actual worry on this, I guess, and I suppose this is the way it's going to go anyway, is um, these, these lefties are actually – whoever's in charge of them, they've been told to push certain buttons of people. And I'm guessing burning the American flag and yelling out things like, you know, down with the American flag and down with America and and then uh, going into Washington and, um, you know, defacing veterans' buildings and veterans' uh cenotaphs, etc., is really going to piss some people off. Now, what I'm expecting is what I think Trump is actually aiming for here is for everyday people um, who are pissed off of this situation to actually come out and actually start dealing with these people themselves. Because let's be honest, that's where this has to go. Because People like me, people like you, we've had a gut full of this shit and we're not going to put up with it anymore. And these lefties can come out and, you know, break shops and do whatever they want to do, etc. 
but there's a big difference between breaking down a shop and looting a shop and breaking a car in it, then breaking down your society and breaking down the way you want to live. So, okay, so, so every time there's a problem in America, these guys are going to do this. If they get away with this time, with it this time, they will do this every single time from now on. And they will literally break apart the fabric of the US. That's what their aim is. And that's what the aim of the Democratic Party is. To, and these elitist wankers who run the show, they want to break down the fabric of society. That's their aim here. So, you know, Trump's saying to them, hey, and, and honestly, if Trump does come out, I'm fully expecting him to come out and say, as of four o'clock this afternoon, if you're on the street, you're going to get one or two things arrested or shot. Because he's not a man to mess with. That much I do know. Um, maybe you might agree, maybe you might disagree. But, but, this much I do know, if you're going to piss him off, he's going to react. And he's not going to back down from these clowns. And I fully applaud the fact that he hasn't come out on and done a national address. What, what's that going to do? And what is that going to prove? Because like I said, he's not a politician. He doesn't have to appease anybody. So what, what is this going to what, – what would him coming out at the moment – and I wouldn't be surprised if he actually does come out when he does a national address and say, well, there's no point in me coming out and saying anything because what would it have proved? These people were going to do what they were going to do anyway. But after 4 o'clock today, that stops. And I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing the troops come out on the streets that's how serious this is going to get. But, like I said, and then the militia is going to join them. See, I suppose we were all sort of thinking that this was, you know, eventually maybe there was a better way that this could happen, but it can't because you've got two types of society in America now, the haves and the have-nots, if that's the right way to say it. And, you know, there's people that are prepared to get off their ass and go and get stuff, and there's people that sit on their ass and ask for stuff. That's probably a better way to say it. And those two have actually hit a crossroads where people are now saying, oh, Jesus, you know, how many of these people do we have to support? And that's another big problem here. Now, don't forget one month ago or two months ago before the coronavirus, America was pumping. But you need something like this, the coronavirus, I expect to sort of make people realise, well, it's only a short-lived thing. So the problem that they've got is, is that they've run into this brick wall and they've been kicking the can down the road for a long time now. So... And, and, and here's the other thing. These, these governors are now going to put their hands out for, um, I don't know, retribution money, uh, money to rebuild, and Trump's going to go, no, not giving you a cent. Watch this space. Go and find the people that cause the problem. Or he's going to say to them, you caused the problem because you didn't manage your state properly. So you now have to pay for this. That is going to, that's when people are going to start going, wow, this guy's for real. And you can hear it in his tone in that phone call to him. You guys failed to do your job, more or less. You know, it's not up to Trump to do this. It's actually up to the governors of these states who are all Democratic governors, by the way. And and now they're going to say, oh, we want our, we want money to do this, and he's going to go, there isn't any, get lost. Those buildings are burned down. They can you can knock them down, and they just stay like that. Memorial to what happened. But look, here's the other interesting thing. 
is the um, the way the Australian media media is actually portraying this. They're, they're caught between the fact that, um, oh, you know, they're protesting about this black man. Can I and can I just say something? And I really got to say this after watching that video. Two things, two things happened in my head. <clears throat> One, I actually forgot. I didn't even notice that he was a black man. And I'm actually speaking about this as a guy who used to do this for a living and used to be pretty uber violent towards people. And I was watching that and I didn't even, you know what? He was a human being. It seems that everybody's forgotten that. And another human being who just happened to be white was standing on his neck. So here's the things that I don't understand. Why did people just stand there and film it when they could have just gone up and pushed the copper off anyway? He wouldn't have shot him or anything. They could have literally, the guy was actually standing there with the camera. Why didn't he just push the guy off? Why film it for nine and a half minutes or whatever, 12 minutes or whatever? He actually filmed the bloke dying. At what stage did that guy go, hang on a minute, get off? And two, as a person who used to be uber violent and, you know, used to do what I used to do, you know for a fact if you've got your neck, knee on someone's neck, at what point they pass out and at what point you're going to kill them. That's a, I'm just telling you that from a fact. That bloke knew what he was doing. There's no two ways about it. So it's it's all really interesting to watch it, you know what I mean? And as a human being, I was I was gutted for that other bloke. Honestly, I really was. But being who I am, I was really pissed off with the guy who was actually filming it because he should have shoved the copper off the guy a long time before he stopped filming. You know what I mean? There's, there's no excuse for that. I'm sorry. <clears throat> there's no excuse for the copper. But there's actually no excuse on this planet for that bloke to stand there filming this bloke dying and not pushing the copper off. That's how twisted and bent we are in society now. We'd rather film someone dying than actually reach out at arm's length, which he was, and push the copper off the bloke he was killing. That's something that I just can't wrap my head around. I would have clumped the copper. If I, I said to my wife, if I was actually standing there watching that, I would have actually clumped that cop. And no court in the world would have convicted me. a fact but there were several people there that stood there and filmed him killing that bloke at no stage did, did none of them step in and like whack the copper over the head or push him off or anything that's all they had to do was just push him off I would not have been able to stand there and, and let that happen I'm telling you that for a fact <coughs> okay so we all know where this is going, and uh, that's pretty sad, but I guess we all knew this was coming. If you're watching this show and you're watching other shows like mine, then you know what's happening. It's all, I don't know about the religious side of it. Um, I try not to go down that track um, because... Um, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want it to be the main influence. I want to try and have a open view of things as they are. And I think that sometimes the religious stuff gets in the way. Although I have to say, there's a guy on YouTube, I'm going to show you his site. Hang on a sec. This is the site here. Kajani Amari AK. Um, and I'll leave the link in the description box. Um, 
some of his um, videos are pretty thought provoking. Let's just say that. Um, I I don't have the religious knowledge or the it's not really religious. It's it they are they're a religious con context, but the, it's done in a way that it's kind of it's done in a way to sort of make you wake up a little bit, if you know what I mean, which I kind of like. Um, I'm not too sure about the numbers and stuff that he he spruiks out, which. Uh, but I have to be honest. Uh, whoever this guy is, is whoever this is that's doing these videos, is really on the ball. Like, uh, and I could see how you could kind of get sucked into that religious view of these things if you're watching this, watching them time after time after time, and it might start. Uh, swaying your ideas but there's some of them that i just can't i just watch them i just go wow you're kidding um it's so in your face it's you know it's it's an eye opener which i guess is the whole purpose of it all right look uh i'm going to be doing a video with david morgan on thursday morning australian time so uh, if that gets way late i'll you know i'll obviously won't post it but um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the financial markets that you guys aren't aware of at the moment. And there's something that David and I, or David's asked me to uh, find out about here in Australia, which has actually, um, we've actually found out is actually true. And that's a big bombshell. So uh, I won't say any more than that, but we'll uh, bring it out on uh, you know the video so you guys can understand exactly what, is going on and just how desperate this is all getting. Um, get, so keep your eyes open, folks, and your ears open because this is getting worse really quick and it's escalating really quick. So just keep your eyes and ears open, okay? All right, let's do the prayers. Okay, pretty long verse of the day from Revelations 21, 2 to 4. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned with her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away <clears throat> every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Well, how apt is that at the moment? And as always, folks, we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. You guys stay safe. If you're in America, bunker down again uh, or react and start kicking some ass. One of the two, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> it's getting crazy by the days. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't be laughing, but, you know. God bless. Take care. Prep out.